What if we could learn from outstanding leaders in business, sports, and education from some of the best voices in corporate America? Lighting the Path is a series of interviews with industry leaders whose stories highlight strategies that build purpose-driven cultures, engage and retain top talent, develop drivers that create high-performance teams, and connect people to the vision of your company. Join us to hear from game-changing, talented leaders whose paths make a difference at work and at home. successful here's what i'm what i'm hearing uh you're what you're making me think about it has to do with is um um you, i specifically want us to talk about the senior person whenever they get off because that's the one man god what do i do a junior person you pull them in you say okay make these phone calls you don't run activity it's a different type of thing the senior person is different and when somebody gets off i know for us when one of our senior people would get which happens for different reasons how do you get them back on what i heard you talk about is uh, you don't bring them into your office in person or virtually and give them a rah-rah speech. Uh, you do much more than that. I mean, you're going to hold them up. You're going to affirm them. But what I heard you say, you literally would come alongside that person, right? To help yeah. kickstart things. Good way of putting it. I mean, also a couple things that we do is make sure that everybody on the team has got something that they are passionate and excited about. I'll give you an example. There are, you know, seven, eight, nine conferences a year that in the staffing industry, all any most of us can attend if we're so inclined. We make sure that we've got somebody on the team engaged and excited and going to one of those conferences because those conferences also they energize you. You bet they, you. you know, there's there's so much there from a from a content perspective, from a new relationship development, seeing existing customers, seeing, you know, being being part of our community and also ongoing training and development. I mean, there is, there are lots of different, there's so much out there that we can engage in. And when you are remote, it's super important to be plugged in and also feel like you're part of something bigger than yourself, your desk, your company. And so making sure that people are feeling empowered, mm -hmm. um, yes, of their job, but also in our bigger community. That's also been super important for us to ensure that everybody feels that way. And another thing is success begets success. When you're having success, you're excited about and you're, you know, it's it's really like this momentum in this ball. And even in this difficult last 19 months that we've been in, um, we are very fortunate that we have been, um, uh, what happens in the staffing industry happens at Main Derby, but we had 13% growth last year. We're having another, we're having our second, maybe we'll have our best year ever this year. I don't know. Just talk to me in four more months, but it's really this, this momentum that, that, that you just have to keep stoking. And it's really interesting. Part of it, Mike, is that we hire lifelong learners at Me Derby. And so when you are constantly feeding people, when you're constantly feeding people with what they need, then they get what they want. They they get what they need. Yeah. And I, you're not, you know, I feel like this is turning into an infomercial for Mike because it's, it's the space <laughs> I play in, right? I'm I'm a learning and development to train. But the reason I ended up doing what I'm doing now is because while I was deemed somebody who was an effective leader, the way I led was I was a great teacher. This is what my people have told me over the years. They kind of led me to starting lighting the path because it just that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. And I love it. Here's my observation that I've had. I saw it in COVID. I saw it before COVID. I saw it post COVID is that when it comes to learning and development, which is a, a really key part of your business culture, not my your business culture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that what I, I I get very frustrated whenever I talk to to leaders of organizations that I can't I I don't have time to take my people off their desk to go put them into a training thing because we got too much business. So that's one aspect of it. Well, I can understand. You got the cash register going. Well, then there's a the flip side of it. Um, I can't put them in a train development because we just don't have enough business. I got to keep them on their desk. And what I've experienced over the earlier decades is this: is that that whenever, whenever somebody can do like you've done, which is placing a value mm -hmm. on learning and development of the people equal to serving a client. Yep. When I'm going to create that type of time, space, and financial resources equal to 
making a placement, making a sale, completing a search. Man, that has impact on the culture, doesn't it? Well, this combination of success beginning begetting success. So you you know you 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 create this this environment where people are successful. You're constantly giving them opportunities for learning and development because that's how we get to our, in my opinion, our higher selves. This um, and we also give and then we support them in their whole lives right, in this remote and flexible work environment, and also give them open-ended compensation opportunity. So really, the more successful you are in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in staffing, in sales, the more money you make. So you've got people who are making more money than they've ever made before, and that's exciting. And then we also have you know, great I, one of the things I'm super proud about, we have, we have really good benefits at Meter. We've had a profit sharing plan for 10 years. And so the fact that we're investing in people in a whole bunch of different ways, it just, um, you know, it, for us, it is a successful, it's a successful endeavor. And yeah. I think overall people are really happy. It, 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 listen, you know, bombs blow up every day and it's super challenging finding the best talent and the and 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 it's you know there's there's millions of balls in the air at all times mm -hmm. but um we are changing people's lives every day and at, the, at so. the core of all of the business that we do in the staffing industry one job at a time we are changing people's lives that's right that's that's why you and i always have gotten along is because of the fact that's I, I early in this business uh I, I woke up one day and realized how many other professionals professions when you show up at work that something you do today may change somebody's life I mean, it just it has that kind of an impact. And uh, I, I tell you, uh, I, I don't want to lose this, Robin, because there's um, Sammy Joe Small is somebody else is somebody who I was blessed to have interviewed on, on, on the program. She's an, an Olympic Canadian athlete. She was a woman uh, hockey player. She was a goalie on the Canadian women's Olympic gold medal hockey team. So she's a world-class athlete. And when she and I were talking about competing at that type of level she one of the things she stressed so hard that i think we sometimes lose track of in, in as leaders is the ability to allow the body to recharge mm -hmm. to, to, to 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 step back to to retool it's because what happens is if you want to develop a muscle you got to give recovery time for the muscle and that's how you build stamina and what happens is we get sometimes we get caught up in this go, 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 go type of an environment. I'm hearing you talk about things where you allow people an opportunity and it's and, and, and value the opportunity for the person to take a step back so they come back stronger. They come back more fulfilled. They come back more connected. That's that, that seems to be a part of your culture. Yeah. And the, um, you know, learning from every mistake. So, you know, a call I had earlier today was, um, you know, a situation that didn't go well. <laughs> and so we did a, um, you know, 30 diagnostic on well, well, we had to do the internal diagnostic. Now we got to do the external diagnostic and we need to ensure that we have all the information and mm -hmm. that while it didn't go the way anybody wanted it to, that we're able to have the conversation um, get on the same page and then have a vision for the future. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's so important to, yes, rest, recharge, but also learn so we can just keep on getting better. So that muscle is going to be stronger and more resilient. We use that word resilient a lot around here. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's such an important quality in um, somebody in, in, in our industry yeah. is this resilience because there's so much change all the time. We have to be so flexible and it's constant, but mm -hmm. also it's exciting because it is constant and it is always changing. Yeah, very much so. It's uh, you talk about resilience. By the time we get to air this, I've already released the one that I just had just last week. Um, and the what's interesting is the the, the term resilience was the, the key aspect what we talked about. Okay. And I love the definition. It wasn't getting up off the mat and getting back in the in the game. It was the definition of resilience was leaning forward, leaning forward with learning. That it's like when you're dealing with a difficult situation, you don't run from it. You have the difficult conversation. You lean forward into it, but you do so with learning. What did you learn from the past? What are you learning now? 
Where is it going to take in the future? And I just love that definition of resilience. Okay, I'm writing that down. Please do. Um, it's leaning forward mm -hmm. with learning. Mm -hmm. Because the point was made is like, it, you know, the definition of resilience before was getting back up off the mat. Well, getting back up off the mat, you're in the same place you were when you went down. But when you lean forward with learning, that means that you're not going to get back on the mat because you're not going to get knocked down because you lean forward, you learn to move your head, you learn to do something or whatever. So with learning, so it's not a matter of going this way. You're always, that's that movement forward. It's, it's that, it's that, I, I'm still learning. It's, it's that move the ball. You're leaning forward with things. And because I think in our business, uh, the, the people that we wrestle with, or our people rather wrestle with is, is momentum. Because that's what I'm, I'm hearing you talk about is how do I build mo momentum? Tell me, you said you made a comment about the difficulty of the last 18 months. What, what was your reference point behind that? Well, uh, you know, we've been in a, I mean, the staffing industry has been in a, I don't want to call it a free fall, but mm -hmm. a downturn. Mm -hmm. And I think for, you know, some, uh, when you look at, when you look at me Derby's client base and that, you know, it is representative of, of every size staffing company from startups to some of the largest staffing companies in the world in every staffing vertical. Um, you know, over half of them are private equity on, or our clients are at private equity. I'm more than half the staffing companies, I think probably in America. Well, no, because there's so many, so many uh, still independents, right? Yes. Yeah, small under $10 million private right. health companies, but um, there are, you know, there's been a lot of pain and, and, you know, healthcare is the healthcare staffing is the, um, been the, the biggest pain point you you mentioned uh, SIA earlier they and ASA they are you know fabulous resources for information and research um in the the mid-year ASA uh, SIA report um the healthcare staffing was down 48 percent I think year over year mm. and uh, you know 25 percent last year but you know in that that travel nurse space that was so highly impacted during COVID and had such you know explosive growth is normalizing and it's painful and and it's not just healthcare. It is commercial staffing. It is it is you know it's across the board. Mm -hmm. um, so companies and leadership is having to think. Um, they 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 are they are having to think differently. They are having to um, lead through vision, through empathy, through. Um, going back to basics in a lot of cases i mean uh the, the the five years prior to this the focus has been on talent of these companies staffing companies that have not had enough people to fill all the positions and it's been a talent driven market and so um talent re recruiting and delivery has been king and you know sales has taken taken a back seat and in a downturn like this um and i think that i think the industry overall uh, maybe you can quote me on this. I think it was down 10% last year. Um, and I think the number was supposedly maybe tracking to maybe a 3%. Um, it, we'll just have to wait and see how this okay, how it shakes out. Up. then. So, so right, right. I, I know companies were expecting to see um, somewhat of a, an increased second, uh, third and fourth quarters. I think we're still seeing maybe some stabilization. Um, but my guess, and it's not really my guess, but I think the combination of the political environment and the um, uh, interest rates still being high uh, are keeping demand somewhat repressed. Um, so anyway, it's been a difficult 18 difficult months, 19 months in the staffing industry. Um, but you mentioned this could be a record-breaking time for you. What have you done to build momentum in spite of market conditions being somewhat adverse? Well, there's something to be said for doing the same thing for a really long time and, ha you know, having uh, a good brand recognition uh, around that. And so for 35 years, we've been doing search for the staffing industry. Um, I think that in spite of market conditions, um, companies have needed to really um, uh, 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 impact up skill in their sales and sales leadership areas. So um, one of the things we did in 2024 Three was we started a division placing individual contributors, sales and recruiters. So we've always placed managers. Um, typically, well, in 2023, 60% of the work that we did was placing management um, professionals, 30 to 35% placing executives, and then just a small amount, 5% placing individual contributors. But this year it'll be higher because we are intentionally started a division, allocated a couple of executive recruiters to placing, to focus in that area. And that was, I think, just 
fortuitous because the demand has been so high there. So we've really focused in some of the high demand areas. Um, the executive hiring has continued even in spite of this downturn. I think the, not, the amount of private equity money in the staffing industry, private equity will often swap out executive uh, leadership, particularly in difficult times, because I'm not going to say they're looking for the shiny new object, but they are looking for visionary leadership who can you know, really impact growth. Growth, mm -hmm. it's all about growth. And um, additionally, uh, there's been succession planning at the executive level in in founder-led companies. And that's probably, you know, there's some of that is baby boomer retirement. Some of that is probably pent up from a couple of years during COVID when there wasn't new executives being brought in. So I think that, you know, several things, but um, we are fortunate to have got, you know, this very strong brand, a very well tenured team, and um, we're so well positioned in the in the industry that we are fortunate to get a lot of referrals. Yeah. So the other part that um, that's kind of I'm hearing that's unspoken was that in spite of market conditions, your the people in your group didn't go to a victim mentality. Uh, in that saying, what steps can we take? You shepherded a um, an adjunct, you know, an area that is hot, and so I'm going to redevelop resources, focus and attention in that, and that yeah. keeps momentum going. And so I think in, when we're dealing with, with uh, I love that the executive vision conference, one of the speakers talked about this um, marketplace of inflection is what he called it, you know, which isn't super high, but it's also not depression. It's bending, it's moving. So enjoying that place of infection, in, inflection, that's where leaders have to step up and, and do the vision casting and point people in the right direction and not you know, and, and be able to have those those conversations. Uh, we're running out of time, which I knew we would, but it doesn't. I, I'd like to just if, if if you have time to answer one other question, because one of the reasons I was interested in speaking with you specifically is that you've been a voice for DEI for um, uh, in particular women climbing in the, in leadership roles in their career. Uh, and you've been a voice for a long time and a very, <clears throat> I think, impactful voice in that space. Um, what have you learned that um, as you were, you know, what have you learned being a champion uh, specifically in uh, for, for women who are climbing and are trying to climb and be able to, 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 to grow in their career? I've learned we have a long way to go. We are making strides, but they are... We have a lot of opportunity, Mike, to, um, uh, and we've got a lot of opportunity. The staffing industry is still uh, woefully short in women and um, minorities in executive roles. Mm -hmm. And without purposeful and actionable goals and objectives internally, um, we won't, we just, we, we will get there, but it is, it is a constant conversation and people like Eric Gregg and Kip Wright, Women's Business Collaborative, women who are in the industry, at, um, sponsors of women who are continuing to put a spotlight on elevating um, at, and, and organizations like ASA and SIA who have really brought these issues to the forefront. The Women in Leadership Interest Group at ASA is one of the most impactful organizations or parts of the organization that I've ever been a part of. We were, I was, uh, Meet Derby's a, a sponsor of, of that group. I was um, a, a part of the uh, initial group that, that founded that council within ASA during COVID. It, they did a spectacular job of not just building community, but connecting community, community and keeping this conversation going and elevating every voice. And the Women in Leadership Scholarships that have been, um, this, this is, I think, the fourth year of scholarships. The last two years, there have been, I believe, eight women who have received these scholarships to come to Staffing World, to come to the Thrive, which is the Women in Leadership uh, Interest Group Conference. Uh, which has taken on a life of its own. The whole thing has taken on a life of its own. So we are gaining momentum, but we have got so far to go. But the conversation is so important and it needs to continue. And it's not just women, it is minorities. It is people 
it, 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 there's in every population, I mean, aging populations. I mean, there, there are so many places that we need to just be equitable and inclusive. And frankly, we need to be um, thoughtful and we need to be making these, this a high priority. I mean, there really is no place for discrimination and mm -hmm. we are seeing movement. And I'll give you the, you mentioned that I, I am um, on the ASA board, the American Staffing Association Board of Directors. And I was um, voted onto the board last year with two other women. So that was 2023. So this is just one year of a three-year mm -hmm. term. And with myself and uh, my two other colleagues that were voted on last year, there is for the first time um, equity, gender equity on the ASA board. That is huge. It's so exciting to be part of that. And I, I mean, I just think that the spotlight is being shown and let's just light it up, Mike, because mm -hmm. we've got so much opportunity here. Yeah. So the voice has to be, uh, I think people need to make sure their voice is being heard in the space. Uh, the theme of a lot of what you talk about has to do with development. Uh, I think it's, as people are trying to navigate the DEI space for themselves, they've got to be asking themselves the question, where's my development opportunity? Where do I need to grow? What do I need to get, become better at so I can have more of an impact so that my light can shine bigger? You talked about, uh, I think that if you don't have a specific mentor, you need to find somebody who can can mentor you as you go through that. And sponsor you as you yes, go through that. But part you. of it, it, I mean, I'll go back to education and, and training. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the more we know, the more we learn, the more opportunities there are for, you know, impactful change. And, you know, it's all of us, but, you know, we don't know what we don't know. I didn't know the definition of a sponsor mm -hmm. was somebody that advocates for you when you're not in the room that puts your name forward, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in, you know, in this political time we're in right now, Joe Biden is sponsoring Kamala Harris mm -hmm. and has championed her. And she is now running for president um, mm -hmm. as her. And, and it is because of his sponsorship mm -hmm. in, in so some, many ways, not yeah. not not exclusively, but in, in so many ways. That's right. Um, so, as we, yeah, so as we wrap this up, then it's uh, I think the message that I'd like to, to, to cap this with is that uh, to, as, as you're trying to navigate that space, uh, to make sure that you are intentional, mm -hmm. uh, intentional in this, in, in not just the steps you want to take, but the network you want to build for yourself, the skill that you want to develop, and focused on, on where are areas that you can have impact, because the more uh, places where you can have impact, your light's going to shine bright. So Robin, and there's so many more resources than there were, you know, even two years ago. I want to just point out, um, point out uh, there's a, a, a group, an association, if you um, called Women of Color and Staffing, mm -hmm. and it is a, um, a spectacular organization um, championed by a woman named Deliver Wesley, and um, really getting um, getting some some recognition, but. That's another resource for anybody who's interested mm -hmm. beyond ASA and SIA, mm -hmm. uh, women of color and staffing. Yeah, but I, but I'll, let's tag those. But if if you are not connected to ASA or SIA, you know, get involved, go look, and there's resources in there. Yes, that, that fall along those lines, and there's resources, and that's what I hear the, this this message you have. So no, but Robin, I want to thank you so much for this time. It blew by for me. I just. Uh, it's uh, you're delightful to talk to. I love this the walk that you have and the uh, this this sense of of community uh, as opposed to company. You build a community. I think there's so much of us that we could learn if we embrace that and these organizations that we leave as we're trying to grow as leaders. And I'm going to thank you so much for sharing so much. We'll have Robin's contact information for you in the show notes if you want to reach out to her uh, and her company and. Uh, and maybe say thank you if you got a follow-up question for us. I want to thank you for your time, Robin, and wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thanks for joining us today on Lighting the Path, Strategies for Tomorrow's Leaders. If anything in this podcast speaks to you, if I've challenged you, or if you want to spend time digging into this subject a little deeper, or if you disagree with me, reach out. My contact information is on our website, lightingthepath.net, or email me at mike at mikelejeune.com. 
Also, look for me on LinkedIn. I'd love to connect our networks. Keep lighting the path for those who choose to follow you. It's more than a responsibility. It's an honor.